Hey, let's compare spelling curriculums. Okay, was, was that voice a little bit too overexcited for talking about spelling? Be honest, you can be honest. Uh, my feelings will not be hurt. <laughs> I am going to be showing you Spelling UC, uh, Becca, and we'll be diving into the spelling of the good and the beautiful just a little bit as well, so that you can kind of see some different approaches from vastly different curriculums and how they teach spelling. I wanna start off this video though by saying there is no perfect one size fits all spelling curriculum out there. There is, if your child struggles with spelling, I don't believe that there is a program in the world that is guaranteed to help them suddenly, magically understand spelling for the rest of their life. Um, in my own experience with education, I have found that English spelling tends to be one of those things that just clicks with some brains, and with other brains, it is a long and slow and probably never-ending process, even into adulthood. There are many very intelligent, well-educated adults who still don't spell everything right 100% of the time. Um, my own in my own family, um, which is a pretty big family, I'm one of eight siblings, we have two very smart kids who are very successful at everything that they've done with education. One is a working adult, has done amazing in her career. One is, in, <laughs> is not yet working, still in school. Um, but is doing very well. Neither one of them are a natural speller at all. They have worked very hard at it. Um, we've tried a lot of things. They have grown little by little, but for them, it just doesn't fully click in their brain. For the rest of the kids in my family, it clicked more or less quickly. So this is my theory. With some, with some kids, it's gonna click. With some kids, it might never fully click, but you can keep working on it and building that skill little by little. All right, let's look at the curriculum. All right, I'm gonna be giving you a glimpse inside a couple levels of each curriculum just so that you can kind of see how they progress over time because we do have that variety between levels. Spelling UC is a very, very non-traditional spelling program. I do have a complete video dedicated to it, which I will link in the cards, but um, just know ahead of time, this is a very, very non-traditional approach. Uh, they do not go by grade levels necessarily, first, second, third. You start with A and it goes all the way to G. So those are the levels that you have. Now, spelling you see listen and write starts out when kids are really still growing in confidence with being able to write letters and when they're at that level where they have the basic ideas of being able to sound out three or four letter words but they don't have to be able to read fluently before you start this program because it kind of really does tie quite a bit into phonics. It's this basic idea of this is lad, then this is lad again. Here at the very beginning, there's not really any testing element. It's just reading it out loud, saying the word out loud, lad, tracing it, and then writing lad down below. Uh, but after a couple weeks, so about eight weeks on the eighth week of the program we're now getting into something that's more of a test but this is not a test in the sense of you study the words and then you do your test after you study the words this is just your teacher says a word and you just spell it based on what you hear so this is completely these very basic words that are basic phonics and you can actually hear the sounds so this is this very beginning stage of teaching kids to write words based on the sounds that they hear. And then we have, so the teacher's guide, which this one is maybe a little worse for wear. It's been well loved. <laughs> We've used this a couple times, you can tell. It has the words that you are reading in a day. So we have our 1A words, 1B. That's when we started with the one levels. So here is 8A. These are our words here, rim, cab, pat fad, tin, pam, that you would be reading to your child and they're supposed to write down the word in the box. They have the boxes to show your child how many letters there are. You can definitely be, you know, encouraging your child to say the word after you and sound out the word. Um, but it's very simple like that. Um, I think they typically say, I can't remember the exact number, but I think it's supposed to be 10 minutes on spelling in a day. So if this is too many words, don't worry about it. You're just doing 10 minutes or less in a day. Some kids might get through this in much less than 10 minutes. 
um, depending on their readiness and level. Then we're going to focus on beginning blends. They, they kind of highlight in gray this box, and you, you, so your child can recognize that. When you have a beginning blend in a four-letter word, this box is where the vowel goes. The vowel is the third letter in the word. So we do move on to four-letter words, stay there for quite a while. And do we get to five letters by the end of the year? Let me just check. Yeah, we get to five letters by the end of the word. And then when we get to five letters, we are again highlighting where the vowel is in these words that have two consonants at the beginning and two consonants at the end. But these are all short vowel words throughout the whole level A. And this is not a memorize the words and then learn to spell them. This is a listen and write what you hear. And that's what it's focused on. I think this is a really powerful way to start off with kids who are just learning to write because it ties so well into phonics and ties very well into learning to read and that just building that connection between writing what you hear. But of course, English spelling, you know, it starts out that way. That's the first words we read, the first words we write, but we, we English spelling is crazy, guys. You know that, you know that. <laughs> um, so it looks quite a bit different in the future years. This is level C, so I've skipped you past level B so we can see what level C looks like. This is where, this is the rhymes. Let me say, oh, wait. No, this is Wild Tales. So it starts out with rhymes, I guess, but most of it is actually factual reading about different types of animals. And let me go to 12A so we can see where this starts. Okay, it starts, you have a factual reading passage and you're gonna be going over this passage for about a week. It gives you the steps right on each page. You're supposed to read the story to your student, then you read it together slowly, having the student point to each word as you read. Slowly going through, slowing the child down, getting them to notice interesting things about the words on the page. Then you find something. In this case, it's vowel chunks, and you mark them with a yellow colored pencil. On every page, whatever you're supposed to mark, there is gonna be a box highlighting and telling you what all of those are, so that makes it easy to know what they are. So we're doing vowel chunks. So we're gonna go through here and we're gonna do, ooh, oh, oh, that's a vowel chunk. Oh, oh, another vowel chunk. So we're finding the vowel chunks within this, marking them in yellow, and then the second part of the same lesson is doing copy work. By the end of this week, you're going to be doing a dictation exercise with your child using this passage that they've been working on the whole week. So today we're doing consonant chunks. All of the things that you're marking are basically tricky little things within spelling. And the idea of marking them is to draw your child's attention to them, help them to notice, oh, de, um, when begins with a WH, there begins with a TH. You're highlighting tricky little things within spelling that are not that obvious to a little kid. Highlighting them, we're practicing, we're writing this little story every day until we get to a point where we are doing our dictation. Oh, here we're looking for all the silent letters and we're marking all the silent letters in orange. So, and they give you a little pointer here. The silent L in walking is new in this lesson. So that L is silent, let's mark it. Then this is your test. This is what your test looks like. It's just an empty page and you are supposed to dictate to your child that whole script, that whole passage. They are writing that whole passage as their test. And that's level three. Then you mark um, how many did they spell correctly. Or you can mark how many they got wrong. Just whichever works for you, I would say. Because um, if they get most of them right, that might be a lot of words to count. <laughs> then um, I'll show you what level G looks like. Just because it changes, gets a bit different as you go through time. That's fine. So G is the last level. Um, and this is modern milestones. So this is basically historical, factual passages that you're reading. And you, again, you have multiple steps, but it tells you exactly on the page what you're supposed to be doing. And towards the end of spelling, you see in the higher levels, they bring out some concepts about how words work. They bring in roots and prefixes and suffixes, things for kids to really pay attention to. So here we're looking for base words right here. Underline each one that has a prefix or a suffix added, and you use different colors. The colors are kind of color-coded throughout. Now we're looking for suffixes. We're gonna mark each of those with yellow. 
And now we're looking for this particular passage. So we, it, it forces your kids to slow down, to read it very carefully, to find all these little quirks of English and how words are made within the passage. They read it and then they do copy work. So in copying, you can encourage your child to slow down. This is not meant to be rushed through. This is meant to be learned from. You are trying to learn this whole passage throughout the week. We do our little studies on base words, suffixes, and prefixes, and you have workshops um, within that. So here we're working on the prefix re. And then by the end of the week, we are gonna do a full dictation. We have a, actually we have a first dictation and we have a second dictation. So they're not meant to be memorizing this passage, but they're meant to be paying enough attention to the words that when they go through the words, um, when, when you read it to them and this page is covered up and they're not looking at it, that they can spell all those words correctly, ideally. They have a first dictation page and a second dictation page. You don't have to do the second dictation if they can spell it all correctly on the first dictation. That's what spelling you see looks like. If you are looking for a more traditional um, spelling program, a Becca is very much within the traditional spelling program. Um, approach and there are several others that are very very similar to this uh, Evan Moore spelling workbooks tend to also follow the same approach of you have one spelling list to work on for a week and you have a few exercises to do, to do at the end of the week you have your spelling test so this is very very familiar probably to most of you um, something that Abeka does tend to include is they tend to include especially in the early years um, with when kids are still learning phonics they include little phonics concepts and the list is, I often hear of traditional spelling, I hear it kind of derided as, oh, you know, kids are just memorizing a list of random words, random unconnected words. Tip, I would have to say typically these are somewhat better designed than that. The words are connected through a particular phonics concept or a spelling concept. So here we have two vowel, long vowel words, and we have silent E, long vowel words. You can also see there's a few exercises that the child can do. And then it's the same concept. They're supposed to have a spelling test at the end of the week and ideally pass the little, little, little spelling test. Now, for most kids, um, especially kids who are not naturally grasping onto spelling, reading these words and doing this small amount of activities, it might not be enough. So, but uh, Abeka can have teacher's guides and when you get the home instructor's guide or teacher guide, um, they're probably going to recommend different different spelling activities, you know, kinesthetic spelling activities, jump up and down while you're spelling it, you know, do jumping jacks or just copy it on the whiteboard, copy it in different ways. Like everybody knows there's a whole lot of ways you can practice spelling words. You don't even need the guide. You can just add in whatever your favorite um, active way to practice spelling is. But I wouldn't rely on just these couple of activities within the book to teach the words. Um, by the end of the week. So I would say you're, you're, you're gonna have to do something with these words, um, you know, every, every day. You practice it a little, you know, five minutes a day, uh, five to 10 minutes a day on spelling can really help you learn these words. And the child ideally will learn these words throughout the whole year. You have a list each week. It pretty much stays the same throughout the whole rest of Abeka spelling. You have a list, um, we start adding in vocabulary words pretty early. This is level three and there are vocabulary words even earlier than that. But by vocabulary words, they simply mean they include a definition. And if you have the test book, you are, when the child does that test, they're supposed to actually like write the definitions or match with the definitions for these vocabulary words. But there will be a list here and then there'll be some short activity, obviously, especially in the older books, older level books, there's not a whole lot of activities um, to do it with. There's pretty much just one or two maybe. So you will have to be doing, you know, copying, writing them on the whiteboard, whatever your favorite way to practice spelling words is, you add that in and then your child takes the test at the end of the week and hopefully has learned to spell all the words on the list. Um, as you get into these higher levels within Abeka, they don't really do the rules so much. Although sometimes the spelling might, tends to maybe have a theme sometimes or sometimes as a rule, sometimes it can be, it can definitely appear a little bit random. This is level seven. So you can see in this one, they have a few more exercises for you and they do include that vocabulary. And in the quiz book, 
they have vocabulary on every quiz. So some type of vocabulary exercise as well as spelling. So this is the Abeka approach for spelling. Now let's talk about the good and the beautiful's approach to spelling. Um, as many of you probably are familiar, the Good and the Beautiful has a language arts program in which spelling is incorporated. So you tend to see spelling activities more woven throughout your lessons and not necessarily in every single day's lesson. Um, depending on what level you're doing, it looks a little bit different. I'm showing you level four right here. In level four, they have a writing and spelling workshop book. So you tend to alternate between a writing workshop and then a spelling workshop the next day. They do teach specific spelling rules and they try to get you to memorize these spelling rules during, um, as you go over them throughout a unit, you're probably memorizing a spelling rule or two in each unit. You have little exercises with the spelling rules. So these exercises are following that spelling rule. We do some work with suffixes here. And then here they're doing some work with contractions. This is in the level four. I'll just show you another example from a couple lessons later. Here, look, we're just we're repeating this same spelling rule. Um, and we're doing another activity, learning this spelling rule. Now we're practicing some words with PH, making the F sound, get to write sentences using them. So they, they do have quite a variety of activities. Sometimes you're just supposed to copy words, but you copy them in like, unusual ways or use different colors or you're writing them on leaves of a tree or something interesting like that. Um, and then we have some prefixes here and we're seeing, okay, what prefix would we use based on this little definition or description right here. So they have these little activities for spelling woven throughout the good and the beautiful. I'll just show you here in the unit overviews they show you what rules are you working on within a certain unit. Um, consonant plus LE and DGE at the end of a word. Different principles, suffixes, prefixes. So they, they do show you here in unit four what you are working on within a particular unit. I have heard a lot of comments and people say that the good and the beautiful spelling doesn't work for their child or it's not enough for their child. So they add in a different spelling program um, and so they don't do the spelling from the good and the beautiful. For me, I don't really understand that approach and I, I'm not, like if it works for you, it works for you. But for me, um, I can understand why this much spelling um, and just doing those little spelling workshops here and there wouldn't be enough or the little spelling activities here and there wouldn't be enough for kids who don't just click onto spelling really fast. But for me, I, I would have no problem with doubling up on spelling, let's be honest. Like these activities that they do for spelling are gonna take your kid five minutes, you know, uh, maybe a little more than five minutes. They're very short, very independent activities. If your child isn't clicking onto spelling right away, I would still do this spelling even though you're gonna add a specific focused spelling curriculum. So that's just kind of my two cents on the issue of, you know, if people, uh, I, a lot of homeschoolers don't want to double up on a subject. I have no qualms with doubling up on a subject. Um, sometimes there is no curriculum that, I mean, when we think of schools, schools and classes are not just one specific curriculum. They are teachers teaching a whole teaching session and they're using multiple resources to create good lessons. This is an ideal school situation. So we don't have to think that, oh, we could not possibly use two different curriculums covering the same topic for a child who is struggling with that topic. You know, I would say if your kid's struggling with spelling and you're using this or some other integrated language arts program that has some spelling, but it's not enough, I would say go ahead, let them do the spelling activities, but don't, but yeah, go ahead and add on that separate spelling curriculum. That's just me. I, I, I don't think we need to be that scared of doubling up on some of these very core skills, especially. Um, so this is what it looks like in level one. Um, this is a pretty old version. There is going to be a new version releasing very soon, but I don't think they're going to be make super, super drastic changes. It's still going to be very the good and the beautiful-ish. It's going to be integrated throughout their work, but it might be lowered down a little bit in level for first grade. And that would probably be a good thing. Cause if you look at these spelling words, um, one thing that my mom pointed out right away when she saw this list was, well, it's too bad that so many of them are sight words. 
And I mean, this is unit one of first grade. So I think that I very much assume that this is something that they're going to be changing as far as the level of their spelling words, because um, the, none of these are using very basic phonics, you know, right from the beginning. And I think that was intentional on their part when they designed this, that they wanted to use specifically, uh, they, I'm trying to find the first activity right here. I believe it was in lesson, oh here. Yeah. Lesson three, um, but I do believe it was specifically that they think they're gonna teach all these basic words with phonics, but then the words that they're gonna really practice for spelling are purposefully tricky words, um, but that can be a little bit challenging and probably their spelling choices are pretty challenging at this level. Uh, so they have, this is what one of the ways that you see these spelling words coming up. You just have a child read these sentences that include multiple of those spelling words um, here. And then spelling just pops up here and there. Again, we are reading these words. And then here they are copying these sentences that have several of those spelling words from that list. So there are different short activities that just pop up throughout the lessons. If you're not really looking for them, you could almost miss them that, oh, that was, that's, that's them sneakily introducing a little spelling word. This is what it looks like at first grade right now. Some are more obvious where your child is reading the word, spelling it aloud while clapping for each letter. Here we're writing away with uppercase letters after reading it in lowercase letters. Here we're writing it in lowercase letters after reading it here. So they have multiple activities like that. And then by the end of the unit, which is not one week, the unit is a couple weeks. By the end of the unit, you are tested. The child is tested on that set of spelling words. And they're hoping that they have learned them through all these different opportunities that they've had to write them within the context of different activities. So that's why I say like, I don't, I feel like I wouldn't skip the activities, but I can definitely understand why um, children wouldn't necessarily grasp the words um, especially at that challenging level of words with those activities. So I hope that that is very helpful.